I recently had the opportunity to go hands on with No Return for several hours, and it is clear that Naughty Dog has not lost its magic touch, despite reports of its troubled The Last of Us multiplayer project. No Return is far more complex and detailed than I thought possible, adding a layer of intensity that exceeds what casual players might have experienced thus far in the main game. It's brutal, unforgiving and challenging, which, you know, might sound a tad intimidating, but it's because of that that No Return so successfully achieves what this franchise does best. It places you right within the cold heart of this post-apocalyptic world. No Return's combat encounters don't have a story, but they don't need to. The goal is simple, survive. Throughout No Return, you'll be tasked with surviving a series of rounds, which culminate in a boss fight. Succeed and you'll be able to begin a brand new run, ending in a boss fight of a higher difficulty. There are five bosses in total. Complete all five and your runs will end in randomised boss fights, a feat that is nowhere near as simple as it sounds. Yes, I admit, I failed to defeat the first boss, a bloater. And I hear what you're saying, a fight with a bloater isn't that hard and you'd be right in saying that. What you don't know is just how limited the resources are in No Return even on the very low difficulties. I sampled a variety of difficult levels, and even on easy, and very easy, I can guarantee you'll find yourself running out of ammo. Each playable character begins with two key weapons, suited to their fighting style. Your choice will still force you to play in a certain combat style. For example, as Dina, I was forced to rely on crafting with my ability to create stun bombs, one of the few tricks in my arsenal. Ellie is perhaps the easiest character to play as, offering an all-rounder approach. You'll be able to loot resources and ammo from your enemies and the environment around you, just as you do in the main game. There are typically three rounds per encounter, equating to three waves of enemies. After each round, a supply cache will appear, also granting you access to loot and key upgrade materials. Worry not though, you do not have to make it through the entirety of the run with two basic weapons. After passing an encounter, you'll be rewarded with supplements, parts and currency. Supplements do just as they do in the main game, allow you to level up your character's skill branch. Currency is new, as you may have noticed. Between rounds, you'll return to a hub room. For Ellie and her allies, this is located in the movie theatre. For Abby and her allies, this is in the aquarium. It's here that you'll find the upgrade bench, plus the pin board which outlines the various encounter paths to the boss. You'll also find a trading post, a small locker where you can use your currency to buy extra weapons, extra ammo or crafting recipes. This refreshes between encounters, so the further you progress in a run, the more equipped you'll be. For me, this system excelled because it kept me on my toes. In an apocalypse, you're never going to find exactly what you're after. While in one run I did finally acquire a shotgun, a saviour when I panic and my aim goes awry, for the most part, the trading post inventory forced me to play and approach combat in ways that I typically might not have been comfortable based on how I played the main game. It added a certain freshness and a risk to no return because I couldn't simply rely on experience. You'll face a wide array of encounters, as players will either face off against the WLF, the Seraphites, or Infected. Also, as I mentioned, the location will change with each encounter, as will the conditions under which you must survive. In some rounds, enemies will begin in search, keen to locate your position, giving you an advantage if you prefer stealth-based approaches like me. In others, they'll start in Hunt, instantly closing in on your exact position. I also encountered one round called Holdout, in which I had to fend enemies off my companion for a certain amount of time. I found this one to be the trickiest, and yet also the round type I'm itching to have another go at. During an Abbey run, I finally reached the bloater, mirroring Ellie's arcade bloater fight in the main game. There are no enemy waves in the final encounter, and therefore supply cash drops. I dealt so much damage to the bloater, fended off a couple of rogue runners and stalkers who attempted to slow me down, and oh boy I was depleted. I had two crossbow arrows left and a dream. When you're trying to outrun a bloater in a small place, it is not easy to stop and pick up spare ammo lying on the floor. Even more so when extra infected keep popping up, but I refused to give up. I was not going to let this epic 45 minute long run end in failure. And that was until a shambler dropped out of absolutely nowhere and polished me off, cementing my grisly fate. That's the beauty of this mode though. You become a better player with each attempt, gaining valuable experience and the fire you need to fight on. I should add that the encounter types aren't totally beyond your control. You'll get to select from a couple of paths, with the difficulty level of each encounter indicated on your pinboard. This difficulty factor has nothing to do with the gameplay difficulty that you've chosen yourself. It takes into account the round type, enemy type, and if there are any mods at play. Oh, and did I just say mods? Yeah. Yeah, I did. The more runs you attempt, the more mods you unlock, and these are applied automatically to certain rounds. 
In some encounters they'll work in your favour, lowering the difficulty and thus the score you can attain. For example, in one instance, my enemies set fire upon a successful melee strike. In others, mods will benefit your enemies, increase enemy and health for example, boosting the difficulty and increasing the score you can achieve. It's just yet another clever way that No Return manages to keep that all important factor of replayability. After a couple of hours with the mode, I felt I'd barely scraped the surface of what's on offer here. There are also gambits to think about. These are combat challenges with a particular encounter. Kill three enemies in a rapid succession? That one allows you to unlock extra ammo and upgrade rewards. Naughty Dog could have easily released The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered with a $10 upgrade fee and called it a day. The fact that no return is included is a real treat, although it is the kind of treat that will leave you screaming NO at the TV every time you fall at the final hurdle. It's both exhilarating and rewarding for me. The most intense iteration we've seen in the franchise so far. No Return is an absolute must play for players old and new. It perfectly showcases The Last of Us Part 2's top class combat while introducing an ever changing set of conditions and challenges for us to contend with. No Return left me breathless and I cannot wait to embark on my next thrilling run. For those who need to know, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, which includes No Return, launches on PlayStation 5 on 19th of January 2024.